Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about what do you do if you have to graph some information, you have to make a histogram, and uh, the class widths are uneven. What is frequency density? What's modal class? All that kind of stuff. So when you're done, uh, you should be able to handle something like this right here. See, I just did a Google search for images of frequency density, and I came up with this. So that's a good practice problem. Uh, Maybe you should try that one when we're done. So you can go back to this point and try this problem right here. See how you do, right? So here's the reason that this is different than a normal histogram. Look at our classes over here from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, 15 to 20. All that's normal. They're all a distance of 5. But all of a sudden, you have a distance of 10, another 10, and then a distance of 20. So when that's the situation, your graphs look a little different. That's what we're going to learn how to do today. Let's back up a minute though. Uh, normally a histogram looks just like this. A histogram is used for continuous data, so there's no gaps between the bars unless there's a zero frequency situation like this one. There's nobody between 80 and 90 years old, right? And it looks just like this. Your, your x-axis is your, your classes, and the frequency is the uh, y-axis. So that's exactly how it works. But if you have a situation like this where you have class widths that are uneven, so here you have a 20 and a 20, and a distance here of 10, 20, and then 30. So here you can see our class widths are uneven. And in that situation, you still have your classes being the x-axis, but the y-axis now is frequency density. And frequency density, it describes how much frequency occurs in that class. And so the way you calculate it is it's just frequency divided by the class width. And you can see that little calculation being done, worked out over here on the right. So that's how you figure out frequency density. So classes are still the same. You mark them off all the same. They're, they're continuous, so those bars are going to line up unless there's a frequency of zero in the middle somewhere. And uh, then on your y-axis, you go ahead and make an appropriate range for these frequency densities. Draw your graph. Boom, you're done. Now, if you're asked for the modal class, which is you know similar to mode, right? Uh, it's not going to be the highest frequency. That's going to be the highest frequency density. And the reason that is is you might have a class width that's super long, like say you know 20, and and you might have another one that's really short, say five. Well, it. If that 5 has a higher density of frequency than that class width of 20, well, then the modal class will be that, that, that class with the highest frequency density because they're having the most occurrences of frequency for the, for the width. All right, now let's take a look at an example right here. This is actually real data from one of my classes recently. Students took a quiz. The maximum score was 25, and uh, the data is displayed thusly here below and we have to create a histogram and estimate the mean score we will do the mean score in the next video right so using this kind of information to calculate the mean score is something I'll show you here in just a moment all right now uh, first thing I want you to notice first thing you gotta look at because it doesn't tell you use frequency density here right here it just tells you to make a histogram right you have to use frequency density in this one because the class widths are uneven this is a class width of nine and then three and seven and then two and four you see so we have to use a histogram now I randomly chose these class widths just because they don't really make a whole lot of sense but that's how it's set up so that's what we're gonna use right so let's get to it now first thing we're gonna do is we have to figure out our frequency density so what you're gonna do is you're gonna make a new column sometimes you can make a new column in between that's uh, class width and then just write that class width and then you just divide frequency by class width and that gives you frequency density but I chose to just do it as scratch work, right? So frequency density, let's figure this out. This one's zero because it's zero divided by who even cares, right? But the next one, we have a frequency of five, a class width of three, five divided by three, 1.67, you know, rounded of course. And then here the class width is seven, so five divided by seven is 0.71. We have a class width of two and a frequency of 14, so 14 divided by two is seven. And then six divided by four is one and a half. 1.5. So these are our frequency densities, and this will be the scale on the y-axis, and this over here, the classes, will be the x-axis. So let's draw our graph. So here we go. We've got our classes down here, and these are our scores, and we have to label So we got to label our, our axes, right? Frequency density and our scores. So uh, from I went up from 1 to 7, 
and uh, here's how it looks, right? So we have nothing, but I'm not going to put a squiggly because there actually is nothing here. Sometimes if you have a big gap, you can put a little squiggly line right there that demonstrates there's nothing here, so we're going to kind of shorten, we're going to slide the axis over. So we're not starting at the origin. But anyway, um, so we've got up to 1.67, then we ha have this one right here, which is uh, the, the third one. We have a, a, a frequency density of 0.71, and then we have point, and then we have seven, and then 1.5, and that would be our histogram right there. Boom, we are done. So just to uh, recap, what you're gonna do is you have to figure out the frequency density. To do that, you need the, the class width. So you just divide your frequency by the class width, and that gives you your frequency density, which will be your y-axis. And otherwise, it's just like drawing a histogram with equal length classes. So I hope this has been helpful, and I uh, hope you guys are doing well, and uh, have a great day.